Okay, here we are again. 343 Labs, Techno Tuesday. I'm John Selway, and that's Otto right behind me. Do you see him? He's underneath a pillow. I don't even think he's dressed. This is what happens. These kids are home. They're stuck inside. They get comfortable, right? They don't, they don't even think. He's, he's just like running around in his underwear all day. But, you know, he's seven years old. It's okay. So, but you, you realize that you're, you're, you're seen in public right now, right? So, all right, I'll let you know. You, actually, you, you can run away when the camera goes off. How about that? Okay, let's give him a second to get out of the way, everybody. All right, run. <laughs> ah, yes, life stuck inside with children at home for months is where we're at right now. So, hi, everyone. Here we are again. Nice to see some familiar names. Hey, Andrew. What's up, Carlos? Robot Dharma, eh, taco time. I still haven't really, you know, we made this joke, this silly, terrible joke about tacos and techno. And maybe one day we'll do something about it. Um, so, right, as usual, it's Tuesday. It's a little after one o'clock. I'm going to make some techno uh, and... Um, of course, you can always uh, ask questions. We'll try to answer them and stay on top of what you're uh, curious about. Uh, you know, let us know if you have any special requests. I can't promise, but today's a little bit more freeform. It's always a little freeform, but it's a little bit more freeform. Uh, in that, I've, I, I, I kind of gave myself a little fun game to play where uh, I'm going to use this website called uh, freesound.org. And uh, it's free, and it's sound. <laughs> and a lot of it is um, public domain. Not all of it. A lot of it is uh, Creative Commons licensed, and it has different levels of usage allowed. Um, and you can just kind of browse for all sorts of crazy sounds and noises and weird things and interesting things. And uh, the idea today was just to ra just randomly take whatever comes up. There's literally like a link here where it'll just randomly serve up a sound. And then we'll load that up techno with it. Whatever it is, you know, all right, if it doesn't work, we'll skip it. But the idea is just to have a little fun and use raw audio and do a little bit of sculpting of the samples and add effects to them and then try to make something useful out of it. I think that will be kind of fun. So anyway, that's what I'm doing today. And of course, I, I've neglected to introduce our, our good friend. Where are you? Where is Thomas? Things are just going haywire today. First, we had the the Here? the the child sneaking in the background. Um, there's Thomas. Where there's no, I don't see Thomas's picture, beautiful face on my Skype scene here. So let's go over here. There he is. He's hiding down there in the lower left. Got me. We got you. Perfect. Hi, Thomas. How's it going today? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Doing good, man. Uh, excited for today's stream. Taking a little bit of a different approach, um, for what I can tell here on Restream, it looks like we got people watching on YouTube, watching on Twitch, and also watching on Facebook, which is pretty, pretty exciting. Woo, that's excellent. Yeah, we have viewers all over the place. And so, uh, I'm excited for the uh, sampling action uh, you're going to get into today. I'm a, I'm a big fan, and uh, thank you for everybody who's you know community. The chat here it looks like TWD Industries, uh, regular viewer, just uh, that you have for John, and we'll be sure to stay on top nice. of them. So I'm just going to, uh, a small warning as, as we uh, proceed, my internet connection has been a little bit flaky the last few days, so bear with us. We've been doing better, right, with the, the stream quality. You know, the video's still a little choppy sometimes. That's my old iMac that's, like, having problems, which is I'm, I've got a PC I'm building over here. I'm really excited about it. It's, it's not a flamethrower, but it's definitely, you know, powerful enough to stream and not drop frames and do video processing, all that kind of stuff. So that will help a lot. But anyway, so just letting you know ahead of time, you know, we're on shaky ground with the internet. So everybody cross your fingers and, you know, think positively. All right, so I mentioned here's Freestound. And I clicked this uh, 
give me another random sound button. And it came up with this guy, this, some guy recorded, um, can you guys hear that? He's like twisting the cork out of a whiskey bottle. And I thought that's great. I love opening whiskey bottles. So uh, this is the first, this, I played around this with a little bit earlier. Um, so I brought that sound, I downloaded it and brought it into live. Let's make sure our audio is going out. Yes, it is. All right. Turn that up a little bit. You can hear that kind of grinding the cork, kind of squeaking. And there, it actually had some kind of low frequencies in it. There's a little bit of a rumble to it. And it's really resonant. And it's almost like kind of a weird acid 303 kind of tweaky noise with that little pop in there. So I threw it into Simpler. Um, well, first I kind of found a start and an endpoint. I found a little part of it that I liked and I threw it into simpler and set it to slicing playback mode. And so now I've got, oh, there's some effects on there too, but right. So that all sounds really, really cool. And, uh, I, I came up with this little bit of a pattern. Oop. All right, let me get rid of the other <laughs> the loop for a second. So that's what I'm starting with. Turn that delay off for a second. You can kind of hear it that especially that first hit sounds a lot like a pitch bendy 303 kind of noise. Play with that filter sweeping up and down. I've got EQ and com compressor on here. I think I need a kick drum to go along with that. No? Who said sounds? Someone said John H. Kingston said sounds like a gooseneck at first. <laughs> and TWE suggests put that grind through some grain stretching. You've got a burial track started. You might be right, and maybe we'll try that. All right, I'm going to I have I was starting to look through kicks. I'm just going to pick some random kick drum. We don't have to get too crazy about it. I mean even just a generic 909 would work. The other thing I thought about is picking trying to pick samples that are not typical generic techno sounds, but just experimenting with other things. I mean actually that's kind of cool. I don't know. Let's not think about this too hard. I'm just going to throw that in. Let's give it a MIDI track. Throw it in a simpler. So in addition to finding random samples, I'm also going to mainly rely on effects processing to like add character or modify these sounds to kind of design the re not completely change the samples. I mean, you know, unless we get into like granular stuff and that's really kind of deconstructing it but you know taking a an okay sound and then trying to kind of polish it up or tweak it into something better and letting the sounds kind of guide the musical direction too all right that's a floppy kick drum isn't it but you know i'm just gonna live with it We've already gone over the whole, like, use distortion thing. There's a lot of sub in that kick. put that overdrive on it earlier but it kind of loses something i think i like it more clean but i did like what the delay was doing I 
wonder. I kind of, I, I like it when it gets tweaky with the frequency going up, but it sounds nicer, sort of smoother, filtered, more bass-like. What do you think, Thomas? I think uh, it sounds pretty <laughs> cool. I like the smooth kind of feel as well. Do you think that, uh, I was wondering when you are talking about the distortion, how do you typically, you know, figure out when when is enough distortion? Because I know that it's one of the effects that's kind of easy to overdo. You just got to listen carefully. You know, in this case, I'm using a tiny bit of saturation. Just when it, when it like, sounds like, right. That's too much for this, what I want, you know? Although that might be good for something else. I'm just, I just want it right now. I'm using that saturator yeah. to warm up and tighten up that floppy kick. Gosh. Add some... It, you know, it's adding high frequencies to the sound, basically. I'm also EQing out some of that. There's a big bump around 200 hertz, which I'm pulling back a little bit. Yep. I wouldn't mind there being a little more high frequency noise in this kick. But, you know, I like, sometimes I like that rough edge in a sound that doesn't have to be perfectly clean. I like a little grit. I think we're going to end up sounding kind of imperfectly gritty today. All right. I like it. Let's go play the sample lottery. So, all right, so that's what I got out of this cork bottle opening thing. Let's click give me another random sound. Ooh, modular samples. This. All right, let's play with this. I mean, it already is kind of a cool sound. But we need to make it better. I think distortion will make it better. What do you think? I think you can't go wrong with distortion, especially in John. John's I, I always like wrong. Distortion. I like distorting things. I'm also kind of, I, I could branch out into some other plugins, but there's something kind of pure and direct about using just the live devices, just using the, you know, the bare minimum. Yeah, I think uh, from a teaching perspective, yeah. especially because a lot of the students, you know, are just working in with live for now and taking just that too. I like that. You hear those overtones coming out? All right. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use, I'm going to try and use that. Let's, um, I don't know. Let's space it out. Green delay? Maybe. All right, I'm just going to put in some kind of random sound. So generic. Sorry, guys. It's just what's happening. It'll get better eventually. I'm on the fence with this. It's okay. It's sounding a little, eh, like rhythmically. It's get, maybe it was too. Maybe I went too busy. Oops. Um, the other way to go about this would be more spacey. I, th that was my first impulse was just to go with reverb and delay and make it more of an atmospheric hit. Uh, let's go back to that idea because I did, and I have to say, sometimes I keep hitting this little touch screen. I hate these. The little touch strip on the MacBook Pro, you just brush it, and it's like, do you want to talk to Siri? No, go away. How do we turn that off? Um, see, it did it again. 
I don't know. I'm not a fan <laughs> it's like of I'm well. trying to hit delete. The touch and I'm just is slightly whole, brushing that little thing, and it's like whole another topic. All right. <laughs> I told you guys it was going to be a little loose today, He's and serious. it is, right? We're like, that. what? <laughs> um, all right. So let me go back to this idea of it being more of a. Because I do like that brightness. So let's do some reverb. I'm going to make it bright, this reverb. Like cutting out the lows from the diffusion network. Turn the high cut off. You know. A smaller size is going to be ringier. Yeah, sometimes you want metallic and ringy in your reverbs. It doesn't have to be all perfect and smooth and natural. Although, that sounds good too. I like that. Whoa, what do you what do you do you like that when it gets all low and growly like that? It started it's definitely getting like a really you know intense I like vibe that. to me. I don't know if it matches the little weird acidy thing yeah. going on with this. But maybe. I'm sure there's a way to put it in there. Now we're getting ominous. All right. I like the spaciness of this, but I want I, I want to have it dry sometimes. This isn't a new trick, but it's it's a good basic one to point out um sometimes i'll have uh and actually um echo has this built in but it has a it has a compressor that'll duck the wet signal out of the way of the dry signal so if you want to do that with any effect you put throw it in an audio effects rack and make an extra chain and you have a dry one and then you have a wet one or it doesn't have to be dry and wet it's just the the, the chain that you want to use as your dry signal that's sending this uh the, in, the side chain input to the side chain input of the compressor, and then you have the one that's getting out of the way. In this case, it's a reverb. So let's put a compressor on there. Open our side chain input, and audio from is going to be. Well, first I need to make sure I'm on the right track. What is what is this? Roughneck kittens? Is that mod? Yeah. <laughs> and then I want to choose the dry chain. And I don't know, let's do post effects in case I add something to there. It'll route it after. And now you see the input into the compressor is the dry signal. And I can use that to like... Right, you can hear the reverb ducking out of the way when I play the note. And when I let go, you hear the reverb come up. That's also like a really good mixing trick for vocals when you want to have a reverb on a vocal, but you want it to be more clear and then have like maybe the delay or the reverb kind of come up at the end of the phrase of the vocal. It's a good way to do that. All right, I'm gonna need a shorter. I don't know if I actually needed that for the sound, but. Um. 
<laughs> Screaming. Let's chop this up a little bit. I'm really, I, I, I want to got to remember to keep to the effects to create the interesting variation and modulation and things that can change over time. Um, the the old trick is use the auto pan as a as a tremolo to do like a rhythmic kind of chopping. Um, there are more sophisticated tools to do that with, um, but this is the easy one to start with that you've got right out of the box. Let's put this after that rack with the reverb on it. I'm setting it to a sawtooth. I'm syncing it. It's 16th note already. I want my phase to be zero. That way it's not going to pan left and right. The left and right are going to be the same phase position. And now I've got a 16th note kind of gated effect after that big reverby sound. Or I could even just put it only on the reverb. Or only put it on the dry signal. Let's play around with the envelope on that sample. I'm not sure it goes with this. I think it's that sort of the, the bottle popping sound. I'm like, eh, maybe just the, maybe we get rid of that one. Yeah, it's sounding more like it really does sound like a weird 303 pattern, doesn't it? Yeah, it's interesting uh, that it's all coming from that original sample. Do you basically have it uh, kind of sliced up here, and you're yeah. triggering? Yeah. So that's like that little grindy, quirky sound, uh, and then that one that right there is the the boop. So I'm just using these first two little slices that live uh, simpler identified. That works better without the, the pop. Yeah, I really like what you did with that other kind of lead sound. Uh, the filter really makes it interesting. All right. We've been messing around. I got, oh, there's way too much reverb on that sound. Maybe I'll tweak it a little bit, but let's go back to our chat and see. <laughs> yeah, we had a good question that came in from Oliver. Uh, he was wondering, I'm assuming, um, talking about that lead sound, does the duct reverb come after the distortion? Yes. Yeah, so that's the distorted sample. And then this is the mm -hmm. the chain the the re effect tracks with the dry chain and the reverb. I, de I decided to darken up the reverb instead of having it be bright. Because I like, I like hearing the crispy highs from the distorted synth.
And I think someone here mentioned compression. I agree. Um, I do mix as I go, and there is a compressor here, but it's just doing the ducking. So sound more even. It's really resonant. It needs some EQ for sure. Uh, EQ and compression yeah. or a multiband That's, compressor. I was so, and I would put that after the reverb and everything because the reverb is like, you know, it's really intense. So, yeah, let's let's yeah. do that. There's all of that. I also think it could have a little more low end. I don't know if I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to add low end to it necessarily, but I might think about like putting another, like a sine wave under it to give it a, or just, a, or like some kind of sub oscillator. I mean, there's a little bit, it's there. Let's see if we can't just bring up what's there. Now it's really hollow sounding. It's not going to sound warm. Although like making it darker, pulling the upper mids and that makes it sound a little warmer too. But then there's also that bass and that. I'm going to put these two guys together in a group and, and bust. Whoa. And it just happened. <laughs> My key commands, I'm like failing. <laughs> All right. Group. Put a glue on it or a drum bus, maybe. The tightening these, these guys together makes sense. But, you know, since I mentioned it. That's good. I want this to sound really aggressive. Someone mentioned industrial strength. Yes. You need to make it faster though, right? Dark man. <laughs> let's. Yeah, I'm not opposed to it though. Let's go back, and we didn't. I got distracted. Let's go back to the chat again. I just want to make sure that we're all, you know, talking to each other and communicating, and it isn't just only about me. And um, we can make our acknowledgments and do our due diligence. So. Um, Cool, cool. As, Sounds great. As you know, this is Techno Tuesdays. No tacos today. Maybe another time. Um, we've been playing around with samples from Freesound. I'm just, you know, I'm taking this idea of like randomly finding whatever pops up on on Freesound, and you know, just the the workflow of working with samples and also using effects to take those random samples that we find and make something cool and appropriately techno out of them. So uh, that's where we're at right now. We got any new people in the chat? Who who are you talking to out there? Uh, I'm talking to PA to Seth who just joined in. He said that it's a nice gritty sound we got going. Very yes. industrial. So, you know, that's a nice little compliment there. And I agree. Um I did want to point out, so it seems like everything you you're working on today is in with yeah, within so live um and using all live instruments and effects, which is really cool, you know. So anybody out there, you know, it just kind of goes to show them the power of it. I thought you really transformed that kind of lead sound, you know, with the effects um, and turned it into something new. But looks like we got Regine. David's in here, too. David Schwartz, you know, a great uh, student hey, of David. ours, saying that dark is good. Yeah. Um, let's see. So here's a question from Regine that just came in. She is asking... Is it correct to say that you eventually EQ um, the train sound clip? So I'm not exactly sure it's what the, sample you're referring to with that. That's the low, heavy um, sound that I've been working on. Gotcha. Okay. And she says after you put reverb and compression. So I guess she's asking, does the EQ come last or, or later in the effects yeah, chain? Um, I often use more than one EQ in an effects chain. In this case, I it you know it's there. 
at the end of the chain to kind of balance what happened before. Uh, sometimes I will start with an EQ, like if I need to cut out frequencies, I don't want to be there. Like, for example, like gotcha. if you put EQ in front of a distortion effect, it's going to change what what frequencies the distortion reacts to. Or if you put an EQ in front of a mm -hmm. compressor, it's going to change what the compressor reacts to. So if you have a very bright sound and the the loudest sounds in, the the loudest frequencies in the sounds are high, the compressor is going to react to those more. But if you like cut out the highs, then the compressor is going to react more to, to the lower sounds that are that you that are still. Do you see what I'm saying? You can kind of emphasize or de-emphasize frequencies before they hit another uh, in another effect. Um, so it's not a rule that Definitely. the EQ has to go at the end. It's more like you know, and I always talk about this in classes, like with, with effects processing, like where do I put my EQ before my compressor or blah, blah, blah. It depends on what you want to do with it. You just need to understand how the signal is being affected at any given point to, and then make the choice. So like, you know, this sound, you know, it has a lot of super low frequencies that we're not even hearing. You know, if, if there were way too many of those, I might want to cut those out even before it hits the distortion. Mm -hmm or before whatever effect I put on it. Other times, and then beyond all that, what matters is what it sounds like. If it sounds good, it doesn't matter where it is. So that's the, I would say that's the ultimate rule. <laughs> like, you know, as long as you're keeping your levels good and you're using good practices with how the effects are working, it does, the order matters, mo it matters most that it sounds good in the end result, so. Yeah, yeah. Like boosting that the resonance of the sound right there before the distortion is making the distortion sound different. Okay. We've got all sorts of stuff to play with. And then um, we actually had we had a somewhat re related question to uh, that question about effects. Oliver Scott is wondering if you could go over your uh, effects again. rack again On and just how sound. that split up. Uh, maybe just okay. briefly. All right, so I'm going to start by, we'll just remind everybody what this, what we started with. Let's turn off everything. So this is the cool. sound. Uh, So that's the sample. It's pitched down from its original. It was up here somewhere, right? That's what it sounded like when in the original sample. And I've got it tuned down, playing a low note, and it's sounding more hollow, and the resonance is kind of pitched down, and it, right? And then I, this I just added. This wasn't there earlier, but that was just to show how the sound changed in the distortion when I EQ'd it and boosted some frequencies before it hit the distortion. Um, but even before that, I have... I'm already doing that, actually. The low-pass filter has the resonance boosted, and it's kind of boosting around those same frequencies here. This is a little higher. Right, and then I've, there I'm using pedal, which is, you know, it's like a guitar stomp box kind of an effect. There's three different types of distortion. I'm using fuzz. And that's, you know, getting that really broken up, dirty, harsh, crumbly kind of vibe to it. And I forgot about this. It has a little sub button, which brings up the low frequencies. That actually might be good for the sound. Gives it some bottom end. And the next thing was to turn on some reverb, right? So at first I just had this, right? And that's all wet. And then I, I added a second chain, which is the dry signal. And then on that, I put an auto pan to do a, a 16th note volume modulation. So it's not panning left and right. The, the 
the phase is at zero, so the left and right are being modulated the same, so it's not a panner anymore. It's just turning the volume up and down, and it's a, a sawtooth wave, so it's kind of like, you know, a little envelope shape that's repeating every 16th note. So that's chopping up just the dry signal. And that's combined with this other chain that's doing the big crazy reverb. And then the other thing I did was put a, 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 a compressor after the reverb to duck out of the way when the dry signal plays so that we hear the reverb more as a tail end, not, so it kind of brings the volume down when we hear that duh, 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 duh part. And then when that stops, the dry signal stops, the reverb kind of comes up in level. And then an EQ, and I didn't get to this yet, I got distracted, a compressor at the end of this. Even just a simple preset like this gentle squeeze. Just to kind of smooth out that sound a little bit. like dark cavernous evil space world you know <laughs> yeah oliver uh, commented saying that it was really helpful for you to go over great. that again and sure. thank you for it so that's great uh, i just had a quick question myself so while we're on the topic of sampling um i was curious what kind of criteria do you look for in your sample search so you can see here you affected the the sound quite a bit and i know that you're really you know, able to manipulate these sounds so heavily and kind of tweak them in your, your, you know, preferred direction. But is there certain things you look for initially when you're listening to the dry well, samples? It depends on the sound. I mean, let's, let's, I was thinking we should find some other samples to play with. And, Perfect. you know, the, the challenge here is I'm hitting this random button and stuff's coming up that may or not be good. And now that I've already got a musical idea, it's limiting my choices in a way. Like when you first start, yeah. you're like, you could use anything and then make something out of it and then it'll take you in a direction. But once you've got a direction mm -hmm. and you start looking for more sounds, you're gonna be, you're gonna be more critical and you're gonna start rejecting things because it's gonna be harder to fit them into the idea that you have. Um, but you can still try. It's a good exercise just to try literally to take whatever it is and make it work. And I did say I was gonna do that. so. As far as like the criteria I listen for, I mean, okay, that obviously it's so quiet and I can't hear it. It's, <laughs> that, it's got to have some <laughs> amplitude, some dynamics there, something going on that pay, makes sense. Um, that's a, that's yeah. one. And all right, like it's obvious. Like I don't need some guy walking through the bushes right now. That's not what I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm looking for more full, on, more full frequency, more rhythmic. Or something more like deliberate. It doesn't have to be musical, but just some kind of character. I mean, that could be a percussion sound. Let's use it. Like, I don't think that's an awesome sound. It's just, what does it say? Iron nail dropped on metal stage weights. But it, it sounds like, like a, a metallic percussion, right? So let's see if I can make it work. I, I bet you it'll, it will, because it's so simple. Something that simple, but still distinctive will be easier to use than something sort of mushy and quiet and unless you're making really quiet ambient music or something. All right, so let's download that guy. Oh wait, make sure we're not replacing, right? New MIDI track, download, open, and now I have it. It's already there, <laughs> you know? That could be Whoa, that, that's just, you know, uh, up here, it sounds like what it is. It's like a nail dropping on a piece of metal. And really, and that's a fun thing about 
taking high frequency sounds and tuning them down, you, you hear those little details in a different way. It sounds like a musical chord. Or, you know, or like a, it's like a bigger bell. Let's do the granular thing. Yep. Who mentioned granular earlier? I don't know exactly, but I think it might have been TWD. He seems like okay. that was kind of up his alley. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it was. So he said, he was talking about an earlier sound, but he said, let's put this through some grain stretching. All right. So to do that with a live device, you would go to Max for Live and use the granulator. You know, that's... Make that into a new mini track there. Um, how to get it out of there. Show manage sample. All right. Uh, can I just drag it from here? Let's see. The mysteries of Live's interface. Nope, it won't let me drag it out of there. But I can go back and locate it, show it in the finder, drag it into onto an audio track there. Now I have it in my session. Uh Oh, wrong track. I don't want to put it in MIDI. I want to put it. There's, there's my audio track. Let's try that one more time. All right. This should be easier. This one, right? Show and finder. There we go. Now I have it. That took too long. Okay, now we're in the granulator. A quick tip about granulator, you have to save a preset so it imports the sound into a location so that it will load it correctly the next time you open your set. If I don't save this next time I open my set, it might not load it. So just be careful. And even before I change it, I'm just going to say, okay, what was this, a nail? Nail grains. All right, now it's in my library. When I load it up next time, it's definitely going to find it. It's just a good uh, thing. All right, so what happens if we granulate this nail? All right, we're hearing nothing now. I need to move the position, the file position. There we go. All right, this is basically just looping little pieces of that sample. You can hear them kind of looping and overlapping with each other. You can randomize the size of those grains a little bit. I can spread them out in stereo, which sounds really nice. I can randomly spray the grains in different parts of the sample. Let's speed it up a little bit. We did, we did a little granular a while back, didn't we? We were using pigments to do granular. Yeah. All right, it's a faster grain rate now. Anyway. It doesn't sound like a nail anymore, that's for sure. And I don't know if it, it's kind of like ringy chimey vibe now with this dark you know cavernous evil train music but it could work in like a break or something definitely it's kind of got an ominous ominous thing going on you know just yet yeah. feel when in doubt when in doubt play a diminished or augmented interval <laughs> if you're making dark techno just play like a, a diminished fifth or augmented fourth or a, otherwise no what is it a tritone i think Droning. I feel like it needs drones. It's like. Playing a simple 
melody with chromatic melody in a minor key will work. Really simple, but it works with a cool sound. Yeah. I did. Uh, I didn't catch what device this is that you're using for it's, the granular. It's, it's a Max the Max Live stuff. device. It's Granulator 2. And that's a, you know, that's a download okay. from Ableton. It does, it's not installed in your library when you first install Live. you got to go get grab it. Next, I'm going to make the high note first. Just listening carefully to the details of the sound. There's also, um, there's a frequency modulator in here. Uh -huh. Making it sound more noisy. Taking it to a different planet with the with the FM. There. I like other planets. <laughs> All right, I'm not sure I love it. I think I like it clean, and I haven't even put any effects on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It already sounds so spacey. I almost don't want to. It doesn't. You know, I could put reverb on it or something, but it already kind of has that resonance, like it's in a room. Um, maybe like a delay just to give it a little yep. something. Wow, time is flying by. I feel like I've hardly done anything and it's already 150. And we've only gone through what, like two or three samples? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we went through quite a few when we were just trying That's to find true. something that worked, but I think it sounds cool. This definitely has a vibe going. It almost feels like a Harry movie kind of thing to me. Something's about to go wrong. Right now, it's not definitely not a peak time track. This is definitely like uh, building up the tension part of a DJ set or something, where you're like you're at a low point and you're gonna take it somewhere. But this is just the beginning. I could I might end up more to this and having it get in really banging. I, I have we haven't we haven't done anything with percussion yeah. yet. It's just because of what what we've come up with with the samples. Um, although I still have this sample here, right? Let's make. Uh, percussion out of it. I mean, that could just be a simple hi hat, right? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Definitely. Since it's already here, and I mentioned percussion, it's uh, and that's really easy because it already kind of sounds like it, right? Yep. Right. Simple sixteen notes. Really, not trying to be clever. All right. If you think of like a small, tight hi hat you have in the background a little bit, not like a big, chunky hi hat, but like. still going to sound bright because I'm cutting out a lot of the lows from the sound. It's better. Alright, here's an idea. So, I'm going to make, I'm going to play around with the envelope a little bit and get, a, get it to be, have m uh, more variation. All right. There we go. So what's happening is, um, 